I make a lot of crazy videos every month, doing all kinds of strange things and using skills that I picked up over the years. I get many emails asking, Jerry, how can I learn electronics or welding or machining? So I was going to make this video about electronics and talk about these little electronic kits or kits that you can get from Adafruit, SparkFun, Evil Mad Scientist Labs. You, there's tons of them. And I was going to talk about getting yourself a good temperature controlled soldering iron and books and lots of books, new books, old books, and learning from the past when engineers didn't have as many tools as we have today. Did you know you could make a Smith trigger out of a couple IO pins? How cool is that? And parts, and more parts, and even more parts, and junk bins full of parts to be harvested. I was going to encourage you to take everything apart you can get your hands on and just look inside, see what's going on. And to wrap it all up, I was going to encourage you to go find community, someone to share the excitement of your projects, whether it be your spouse, your kids, or online. But instead, I want to make this video about failing and giving yourself permission to fail. At some point in our life, most of us become terrified of failing. I grapple with it every single day, but it really doesn't make any sense. In my own life, I can't even point to a single thing that I was good at the first time. So let's take a look at some of my failures and I'll share what I've learned. See the scar over my lip? This happened when I was about five. We had a rooster on the farm that we called Papa Chicken. Papa Chicken was a giant. It was huge. So one day I tried to pick up Papa Chicken and I got the claw to the face. I learned the obvious thing here of know the dangers when you go into a situation. But on top of that, combined with my croquet accident that knocked my four front teeth out and caused one of my teeth to become yellow, I found out how cruel kids could be. So thanks to them, in a roundabout way, I tried a lot more things than I probably ever would have since I was quote unquote ugly, weird, strange. And if you're young and listening to this and you're getting bullied, I just want to tell you that it gets much better. If you have a kind soul, you'll always have good friends there to back you up. I went on to do things that many people considered impossible. I built race cars in high school, started my own business, taught myself electronics, and built chips at home. It took me at least three years to make my first transistor at home. And everywhere I look in my shop, there's little containers with bits and pieces of silicon wafer that I've done experiments on. It represents hundreds if not thousands of little experiments that all failed. Okay, let's get more into the recent. A few weeks ago, I tried to make a radio receiver, and it didn't work. No go. Just static. I thought this was going to be easy. These cups at the end of my workbench represent the toxic waste that's left over from my experiments with glow stick OLEDs. After four weeks of nothing, I eventually made a liquid test cell that would light up. Not what I expected, but still cool. This is what happens to your solenoid when your PWM circuit runs away. I was really upset with myself about this because I burned up about $20 worth of parts. But why? I'll go blow money on other entertainment and won't think twice about it. This is from three days ago. I tried to pry the glass off the front of this image sensor to get access to the die below. I wanted to make an infrared camera by using phosphors and quenching. All the bond wires are still good, but it doesn't work. Somehow I messed it up. I did this two days ago. This is a 90 megahertz oscillator that falls in the FM broadcast band. I had a theory that I could take parts of an electret, the electret itself, and put it close to the crystal and FM modulate it and make a really, really tiny bug. It didn't work. And this is from yesterday. This is a quartz crystal. I have a theory that I can make a delay line memory with mineral oil. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth a try. In closing, I'd like to emphasize that out of all the projects I do, rarely do they ever end the way I expected them to end. And that doesn't mean they turned out bad. The following will be my top five suggestions for learning. Don't be scared. Just jump in there and start experimenting. Keep it fun. Learn to celebrate the mistakes because you're going to make plenty. Just because people are telling you it can't be done, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to do it anyway. And don't quit. Before I go, I want to share this with you. This was sitting on my water heater. It was a failed attempt at making zinc sulfide nanocrystals. So I thought. It sat there for months, all the liquid evaporated away, and when I picked it up for this video to show a failure, I noticed that it looked like a glow powder in the bottom and had that green color. So I tested it. It's the best glow powder that I made to date. You can reach me at scorched.chips at gmail.com. 
I always look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching.